Muhammad's followers tell the world that he was the perfect male human specimen, that he was decent, valiant, brave, compassionate, honorable, etc. My own studies of Muhammad's character, based upon the very records of Muhammadans themselves, indicate otherwise. What's your input? As we progress with our series, every single characteristic of Muhammad will be scrutinized and we shall enlighten our audience about them based, as usual, entirely upon the Muhammadan records themselves that invariably prove the opposite of what the Muhammadan scholars do their best to deceive both the believers and the unbelievers. So far, we have touched on several of his characteristics in our chapters 33, 38, 41, 43, 59, 89, and 93. Muhammad was actually the most consummate artist on deception, fraud, and lying. The Arabs of the so-called Jahiliya, days of ignorance, had more honor, veracity, and decency than they ever had or could ever have after Muhammad and his Quran have done to pervert them. He encouraged treachery, lying, betrayal, deception, and all other similarly nefarious characteristics for as long as they were useful to his agenda to convert the whole of humanity to his twisted vision of Islam. These accusations are not based on anger or hate, but are based entirely upon the Muhammadan Muslim records themselves, in the Quran, in the Hadith, and in their history, as we shall show. Al-Baqarah 2.6 As for the disbelievers, it is the same whether you warn them or not, they will not believe. Allah has set a seal upon their hearts, upon their hearing, and a covering over their eyes. There is a great torment for them. The disbelievers, ladies and gentlemen, will not believe because Allah had already predestined them to be so. Allah has set a seal upon their hearts, upon the hearing. They are not at fault since they have no choice in the matter. Yet the merciful and compassionate Allah nonetheless sends them to eternal damnation in his hell. In fact, Allah's predestination is the ultimate form of deception. 2.9. They deceive Allah and those who believe, but they only deceive themselves. How is it possible, from both the intellectual and theological points of view, to claim that mere human beings can deceive Allah if Allah is the God of Israel? This statement is unadulterated blasphemy. Al Nisa 4.142. Surely the hypocrites strive to deceive Allah, he shall retaliate by deceiving them. This verse reduces Allah to a petulant child perpetrating schemes and deception upon his own creation. This depiction is also pure blasphemy. Al-Ma'idah 5.41 Whom Allah wants to deceive, you cannot help. Allah does not want them to know the truth because he intends to disgrace them and then torture them. It is a pathetic belief system if it's God, Allah, conspires and deceives his own creation and then without mercy or justice have them tortured in his hell. In fact, the above verse is pure idolatry to give human attributes of deception, scheming and plotting to any divine entity. Al-Ma'idah 5.101 Believers, do not ask questions about things which if made plain and declared to you may vex you, causing you trouble. Some people before you did ask such questions and on that account they lost their faith and became disbelievers. Muhammad could not tolerate being asked questions that he could not answer. Hence, to mitigate against this happening so that he can continually deceive his followers, he conveniently revealed the above verse, as always sanctifying his prohibition. Al-Anfal 8.30 Remember how the unbelievers plotted against you, Muhammad? They plotted and Allah too had arranged a plot. But Allah is the best schemer. Ishaq 3.2.3 I am Allah the best of plotters. I deceived them with my guile so that I delivered you from them. What kind of a God would extol the failings of mortals such as deception, scheming, plotting and counterplotting? What kind of a God is so immoral and unjust as to consign innocence to the tortures of his hell? Are these verses not blasphemous when applied to any supreme creator? Al-Anfal 8.71 If they try to deceive you, remember they have deceived Allah before. How could mere mortals deceive the allegedly all-knowing Allah? Only if Allah is not God can this be possible. Al-Rad 13.27 Say, 
Allah leads whosoever He wills astray. Does the listener need any more unambiguous statements asserting the predestination of mankind? If mankind is predestined, what for is then the need for religion? And if there is no need for religion, then there is obviously no need for prophets or for Satan. Hence, there is no purpose for Muhammad or his Quran. Al-Ghafir 40.32 Any whom Allah causes to err, there is no guide. That is how Allah leads the skeptic astray. Muhammad's Quran, being a reflection of his own character, is full of deception and betrayal. Bukhari 4.268 Allah's Apostle said, War is deceit. Bukhari 5.369 Allah's Apostle said, Who is willing to kill Ka'b bin Ashraf who has hurt Allah and his Apostle? Thereupon Muhammad bin Muslama got up and said, O oh Allah's Apostle, would you like me to kill him? The Prophet said, Yes. Maslama said, Then allow me to say false things in order to deceive him. The Prophet said, You may say such things. It is crystal clear from the above hadith that Muhammad allowed and sanctions murder, deception and lies to achieve his ends. Since Ka'ab bin Ashraf was an Arabian of the faith of the Jews, he could not have been the enemy of Allah if Allah is the same as the God of Israel. Hence Muhammad's accusation that he was an enemy of Allah is a deception and a blatant lie used only to justify his murder because he opposed Muhammad's slaughter of the Quraysh leaders at Badr. Bukhari 7.427 The Prophet said, If I take an oath and later find something else better than that, then I do what is better and expiate my oath. Does any listener need more confirmation of the depraved indifference shown by Muhammad regarding any truth? Ishaq 3.65 or Tabari 7.94 Muhammad bin Maslama said, O Messenger, we shall have to tell lies. Say what you like, Muhammad replied. You are absolved, free to say whatever you must. Only in Muhammad's twisted morality could a so-called prophet allow deceptions, betrayals, and murder assassinations. What is most revealing in the verses of this section is the fact that his newly converted followers were actually apprehensive to tell lies or to betray trust in their earlier state of ignorance. In reality, they were much more decent and nobler when they were pagans and before becoming Muslims. Ishaq 3.83 One of the young men's fathers confronted Muhammad and said, You have robbed my son of his life by your deception and brought great sorrow to me. Even the illiterate pagan Arabs, his own people and tribe, knew how false Muhammad was. Ishaq 5.19 Hajjah said to the apostle, I have money scattered among the Meccan merchants, so give me permission to go and get it. Having got Muhammad's permission, he said, I must tell lies. The Apostle said, tell them, again and again and again. The Hadiths paint a disgusting and unholy, but truthful and factual portrayal of Muhammad. Betrayal, deception and lying were and are the hallmark of Muhammad and his followers unto this day. Tabari 8.23 Nu'aym came to the Prophet. I have become a Muslim, but my tribe does not know of my Islam. So command me whatever you will. Muhammad said, Make them abandon each other, if you can, so that they will leave us, for war is deception. Even in the 21st century, 1400 years later, nothing has changed. The modern followers of Muhammad, politicians, educators, leaders and their media, do their best to deceive the unbelievers as well as the believers, by doing their best to pretend at distancing themselves from those whom they call radical Muslims. In fact, and in reality, they actually agree, condone and support suicide bombings, assassinations, terror, and the undermining of our democracies with the sole aim of Islamizing the whole of humanity.